Hey, 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 welcome to another Money Today. Well, I wanted to give you guys a quick update because things are really heating up in Europe right now. And the two places that I've been looking at lately that seem to be moving rather quickly is Singapore and the EU, specifically Switzerland. But we're gonna talk about the EU and how they're pushing forward on the CBDC front and the digital currency front uh, much faster uh, than everywhere else. And it seems to be that even the United States, it, on the surface, seem to be supporting this. I mean, you have places like the IMF kind of saying, hey, we need a new Bretton Woods, right? Actually, not kind of, <laughs> they are saying we need a, a new Bretton Woods. And which means revisiting the global reserve currency. And they're talking about making it a basket of currencies or this or that. But the fact that the United States, who currently has a global reserve currency, is supporting this uh, is kind of interesting. Because they're not saying anything about that to the general public. So the only thing we have to do is look at is to see the news coming out and kind of putting this together ourselves. So this is a talk from the IMF about central bank digital currencies and it starts right off, uh, specifically due to the advent of digital money. So they're talking about it out loud, which is something maybe they wouldn't have been doing a year ago so much. Uh, as we've studied so much in the past, MIT is right at the forefront of all of this and has been since, well, MIT and IBM were right there in the beginning of the internet itself. And they seem to be right in the thick of things here in the digital dollar. So we have Neha Nerula, Director, Digital Currency Initiative, MIT Media Lab, been engaged in research collaboration with the Federal Reserve Bank of Boston. So you're gonna see the banks and the Federal Reserve hand in hand here creating a new financial system. Six launches its sixth digital exchange by successfully issuing the world's first digital bond in a fully regulated environment. And then we see six digital exchange goes live on R3's Corda. Now I had mentioned this a few weeks ago that it was built on Corda and that's where it was going to be. And that Corda is in fact the banks because we went back and we saw the beginning of R3, which was R3 CEV. R3 began as a consortium of nine major banks. So when you see R3, just say the banks. So if you go back and look at six, just say six digital exchange, which is the banks, because it's built on R3. So the banks launch the first digital bond. And it says right here, Together, we are delivering the world first, a single seamless workflow and client experience from execution up and including the point of atomic settlement and on ledger, using cash delivered to the six digital exchange by their local central bank. So the bank's getting the money from the central bank. So this really isn't any different than it has been other than it's digital which does open up a whole Pandora's box of things that can be done. But don't think the banks aren't fully involved. And what we're seeing so much in Europe, because SIX is uh, based in Switzerland, is European central banks. Uh, they're way ahead of everything else. European Payments and Digital Assets Conference by OMFIF, DMI. So this is, again, the banks. And... I will leave this in the description because it's so long. You have each of these has videos that you can see on demand for those of you that like long and boring, very good information videos. They do make some excellent points in here, but I wanted you to see who is involved. Bank of France, Visa, Bank of New York Mellon, we're always seeing them, right? Swiss National Bank, uh, Bank of Italy, Bank of Germany, <laughs> Ministry of Finance, Lithuania, JP Morgan, of course, we went over Onyx a few videos ago, Bank of Hungary, 
Look at this, the Algorand Foundation. It seems like no matter where I go, we're seeing the Algorand Foundation, and of course, MIT as well. And SDX once again. World Gold Council, SIGPUB, which is kind of the people who encrypt the money. And I didn't see why they would be involved anymore, frankly, because they don't seem, wouldn't seem to have a use when it comes to digital, but here they are. And I've seen them involved in crypto as well. So pretty much the who's who of Europe here, plus Algorand. And then we get back to SDX, interoperability considerations for digital financial assets. I thought this was very important. Now the quant uh, shills basically have been telling us over and over and over that they are part of SDX. I have seen no actual proof of this. Now I'm not saying that it isn't true, I'm saying that I haven't seen any proof and I've asked all of them and none of them have shown any. They've seen maybe a tweet here or there by the same people or something, but nothing that would constitute one of them saying they're definitely working with the other. And if there is something like that, hey, I would love to see it. I've asked and asked and asked. Now, oh, I hold quant and I wanna do more news on quant. So if you could find something concrete, let me know. I did go through this interoperability considerations PDF, and what you'll see when it talks about interoperability is something we've been talking about on this channel forever. Layer two solutions, Ethereum mainnet, make use of oracles to access and interact across a wide network of existing solutions. So. I have no idea why we're using Ethereum. It just seems like a terrible, uh, you know, $100, $200 even more gas fees. And it's taking forever, uh, but it is the way they want to work it. And uh, what happened is Ethereum made the standards. And this is what we're seeing right here from a functional interoperability perspective. The emergence of industry-wide efforts to deal with standards via the Global Blockchain Business Council, Accenture, David Treat, right? The World Economic Forum, oh yeah, David Treat again, but we know them. The Interwork Alliance, which is the Linux Foundation. The Enterprise Ethereum Alliance, we talk about that all the time. So it's the same old players, and then the banks, which is R3, together, because that's, who's wrote, <laughs> that's basically who's writing this paper. So again, the big three, Enterprise Ethereum Alliance, Linux Foundation, and R3. Which brings me to the other, oh, and I wanted to mention one more thing, and I told you that Singapore was the other part. They're, you know, Project Ubin and all these other things that we've talked about in Singapore. And this is very important. SDX is partnered with the SBI Digital Asset Holdings from Japan to set up a similar digital market infrastructure offering in Singapore. So if we look at Singapore and we look at Switzerland, we're seeing really the forefront of what's going on. And the last thing I wanted to mention before we go is we've taken a look at the largest companies in the world, well, that at least should be involved in the things that we're doing, right? Like Google, we know they're part of the Linux Foundation. Facebook, they're part of the Linux Foundation. Microsoft, Enterprise Ethereum Alliance. So everybody's kind of involved already in what's happening. But the one that's not involved so far as we know is Apple. And I've mentioned this in a previous episode and it's a, probably a good one to go back and watch. I think it was like a year ago. I mentioned where is Apple? It makes absolutely no sense. They are the people who should be at the forefront of the blockchain. They're people who have a, a lot to lose or gain when it comes to distributed ledger, CBDCs, payments, everything. So my guess was that they had a lot of NDAs out and were just hiding what they're actually doing or that they're gonna come in and buy everything up. But I just wanted to keep your eye on this ball here because it's super important. And here's an article that just came out about 
Apple getting us to basically pay for our own digital IDs. Well, it, digital ID is obviously one of the major components to everything that's going on. We've talked about that so much. And it's one of those things that is a must for this whole thing to go forward. So when you've got this digital ID being built on Apple, uh, I just think it's something we should pay attention to. It's going forward in a few states and the states basically have to pay for everything involved with it, which might make sense. But ultimately, uh, how will Apple benefit from all those public dollars coming into its system to have a digital ID which they control, or how is this going to work? I guess we're going to find that out, but um, let's keep an eye on Apple. I will, if you guys see anything, what they're doing, it's going to be important. So that's all I have for this one. I'll see you in the next one. Love y'all.